Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you all how to build the FT Easy Squirrel. Now the FT Easy Squirrel is part of our FT Easy Nature Pack, which is a collaboration between our two good friends, Natalie and Ben Harbor. Now Natalie and Ben both share our love for flight, our love for people, and our love for education. That's why this nature pack is so special to us because it not only shows you how nature and science and aviation all come together, but also is a great model to be able to fly inside gymnasiums. The only tool you're gonna need for this is a hot glue gun. And I'd strongly recommend charging your battery now because this builds so quickly, it'll be ready to go in as little as 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. The first thing we're gonna do in starting on our build for the FT Easy Squirrel is popping out all the pieces. After we pop them out, we'll identify them and then we'll start building. Now that we have all the pieces popped out for our FT Easy Squirrel, let's go ahead and identify each piece and then we'll start building. First, we have our main wing. We have our dihedral gauge. We have our main body. We have the upper piece of our main body and our two nose doublers. Feel free to pause the video if you want at this moment, study this picture, make sure your pieces look the exact same. And at that point, all we need to start is our main wing and also our dihedral gauge. You're gonna notice that there's a score cut going right down the middle of our squirrel's wing. To give some extra strength to our wing and also keep it from bending, we're gonna put a bead of glue right down the middle. I always like to start and stop my bead about a quarter inch from the edge. Feel free to take a scrap piece of foam at any time and if you have any extra glue, you can squeegee it off. Give this about a minute to dry and we'll move on to our next step. Now for our dihedral gauge, you're gonna notice that there's a little tiny line on one side of your wing. This is gonna be the point where our dihedral gauge presses into the wing. To get the proper amount of dihedral, we're gonna first go ahead and take our thumb and our forefingers and we're gonna bend a little bit of dihedral up right over the score cut. This will make it easy for the lower portion of the wing to sit flat on the table while the upper portion of the wing is elevated. Once we have no resistance there, we can open up the score cut, place a bead of glue in, reinstall our dihedral gauge, and hold the lower portion of the wing flat against the table. Keep that scrap piece of foam handy and squeegee off any extra glue that you may have. Once the glue is fully dry, you should be able to remove the dihedral brace and have the wing not move down at all. Now that our wing is done, let's go ahead and join it to the lower portion of the body of our squirrel. The lower portion of the body is gonna line up right over the center seam cut. And you wanna make sure that you have both the rear and the front lined up perfectly in the middle. If the fuselage is cocked one side to the other, it's gonna cause the airplane to turn that direction. Once we test it for fit, we can apply a bead of glue on the upper portion of the lower body and then adhere it to the lower portion of the wing. Keep in mind as we're gluing the portions of the wing and the body together that the notches of the motor should be pointing forward towards the nose of the squirrel. Now that everything's centered, we're gonna let this dry for about a minute and a half and then we can glue on the upper portion of our body. Before we glue anything down, we always wanna make sure that we do a test fit and that we're happy with the way everything lays out. I have a bead of glue right down the bottom. And I just like to support it with my thumb and finger on both the front and the rear to make sure everything is flush with the bottom portion of the body. Now that we have the top of the body of our squirrel glued on, let's go ahead and pay attention to our doublers here. The first thing we're gonna do is do a quick test fit to make sure that our doublers line up perfectly on both sides and that the battery slot is even and the nose is flush all the way around. Once we're happy with the fit, I like to place a bead of glue, outline the perimeter all the way around. We don't have to worry about the ears because those stick up. And then we're gonna place it back into place. I like to slide it in just a little bit before so I don't smear the glue too much. And then press it right down in place. And just like we did in our practice uh, fitting, we're gonna make sure that the battery slot is flush, the front of the nose is flush, and then we can use our fingers and press it and hold it. We're gonna do the same exact process on the other side. We always do a test fit. Check for flush and fit. And once we're happy with that, a thin bead of glue all around, and then back down onto the body. Now 
Now at this point, the main portion of our airframe looks done, but we have one last really cool detail, and that is the tail that's gonna whip around for us. You're gonna notice a little tiny notch on the top and the lower portion of the tail. I'm gonna hold my fingers just in front of that notch, and I'm gonna carefully peel back the paper on both sides. Peel back the paper until it lines up with that notch. And then we're gonna carefully wiggle the tail back and forth on the exposed foam and remove it. To give its tail its iconic wiggle here, I'm gonna place a thin bead of glue right on the back. And then I'm gonna carefully pinch this, keeping in mind that the glue is hot, so you don't want to let that heat pass through and burn you. An easy way to make this always wanna whip back and forth here is I'm gonna go back about maybe about two or three inches for a little thin strip and I'm gonna pull this over to one side and make it wanna kick over. At that point, I can go back to the other side on the back of the tail and make it curl the other way. This should make the tail wanna to kinda of have a zigzag look and when it's flying through the air, it should wiggle back and forth. Go down about two inches. Good. One more at the tip. This should give the tail kind of a little bit of a wiggle there, and as it flies through the air, it hopefully will wiggle back and forth. <laughs> At this point, our airframe is now done. We're ready to move on to the next step and install the electronics from our FT Easy Pack V2. Now, just like the other two designs, the FT Easy Eagle and the FT Easy Butterfly, this is going to be a tractor style airplane as well. That means the motors are going to be the front pulling it through the air. And for that reason, we want to make sure that we align our B prop with our blue motor and make sure that the little round edge is pointing towards the motor and our A-prop with our red motor, again, making sure that the little round nose is pointing towards the motor. We have the prop with our B and right next to the B, you can see that's the round portion of the prop with that little tiny hole. We're gonna line up that little tiny hole and having the back of the motor braced against the table, we can press it down into place. Same process here, we have our A-prop there's a little round portion to the prop that's going to point towards the motor. Take that right down to the table, line up our dot, and press it in. On our motors, you're going to notice that there's a left and a right marking. Whenever we're trying to figure out what the left and right side of an airframe is, we're always going to picture as if we're driving in a car. The left side is going to be the driver's side, and the right side is going to be the passenger side. So I always like to orientate this, so I make sure that I put the right side of the motor, which in this case is going to be the blue motor, and when I flip this over, it'll cross over to my left, but we know that we're still installing it on the right side of the airframe. We want to make sure that we install the motors on the bottom of the wing. This is going to give us a proper thrust angle to make this plane fly amazing. We're always going to do a quick test fit here, and I want to make sure that the little tiny tangs line up at the leading edge, and that everything is flat against the wing. Once we're happy with that, we can apply two thin bead of glues right where the wings of the motors are gonna go. And then we'll press it in place and hold it down. Make sure that your motors are mounted properly and straight with the leading edge and the tangs being aligned. If it's crooked, it's gonna cause the plane to pull one direction or the other. I always like to pass the uh, black and white lead with a white connector on through the fuselage. And that way it's ready for our flight control board. Same process on the other side now. We're always gonna do a quick test fit. This is the left motor, but because the, mo uh, the plane is upside down, we're gonna be putting it on the right side. The fit's good. So put a little bit of glue on both sides and then press it down into place. Now with both of our motors installed, we can put our attention towards the flight control board. This flight control board is amazing because it not only controls the motors, but it also has the gyros to give you flight stabilization, which means whenever you center your stick, the plane's automatically gonna level out. It's always important whenever we're installing our flight control board that we're installing on the left side of the fuselage and that our battery lead is pointing towards the nose and our antenna is pointing, in this case, upwards, but when it's flying, it'll be pointing downwards. I'm gonna pass my white connector on through and I'm gonna line up my white connector with the white plug. You're gonna notice two white plugs on the upper portion of your flight control board. 
Those are for our optional LED lights. Those are amazing to have when you're flying in the early mornings, late evenings, or even at nighttime, and you can even turn them on and off with your flight controller. You want to make sure that you don't plug your motors into these, or your motors are going to run whenever you plug the battery in. Now that we have this plugged in, we can put two drops of glue in, and we're just going to go right down between the two etch marks, and we're going to press it into place. Our next step is to take our red motor leads and you're going to notice either the connector is red or there's a red dot on it. We're going to line up the pins and we're going to gently plug it in. Whenever you need to disconnect one of these plugs, maybe you're swapping to a different airplane, maybe you're re-gluing something down, make sure that you always remove it by pulling on the plug with your nails, not pulling on the wire. Pulling on the wire is going to damage the plug and damage the motor. Now, including our Easy Pack V2 is we have this awesome data card that tells a story, gives us links to great videos like hopefully what you're watching right now. But on the other side, we also have a really cool sticker pack. That sticker pack has logos and has stickers you can put on your plane to decorate it. But next to it, you also have all these rectangle stickers. These are fantastic whether you have to lock in an adjustment on your wing, your tail, or your elevons, but also they're really good for guiding your wires and dressing this up on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take two of these little strips here I'm going to dress up my wires by pulling them back right up against the fuselage and taping it down. There we go. Now on the bottom of the wings, you're going to notice two tiny little dots here. Those dots are going to be for our center of gravity, and that's what's going to help us get the proper balance and enable our little squirrel to fly fantastic. The way our center of gravity is adjusted is by where we position the battery in the slot, whether moving it forwards or moving it backwards. Let's go ahead and grab our battery, which should hopefully be fully charged by now. We're going to slide it right in the middle. And by this point, when we put our fingers right on the center of gravity, and by this point, when we put our fingers right on the dots, we should see that the squirrel is perfectly level or maybe just a touch nose down, which is fine. Now you guys can adjust the battery forwards or backwards to change the flying characteristics of this model. Just remember, a nose heavy airplane flies poorly, a tail heavy plane only flies once. Now that we have our center of gravity established, let's go ahead and bind this to our transmitter. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make the connection with our battery, lining up our positive and our negatives. A little wiggle and it'll pop right in. And then we're gonna take the switch to our flight control board and we're gonna move it forward. You should see a rapid flashing red light. Once we see our rapid flashing red light, we're gonna to go to our transmitter and with our throttle all the way down, we're gonna power it on. Once this is powered on, our rapid flashing control board light should go to a slower flash. All we simply need to do is go full throttle and then close throttle. And if you see a solid light on your control board, a solid light on your transmitter, you are now bound. Let's go ahead and test our gyros by basically moving our motors back and forth, and on the retreating motor, we should hear the RPMs go up. All right, my blue is going back, and I hear the blue is pulling up. My red is going back, and my red is pulling up. Now, when I want to be able to turn this, if I move it to the right, if I move my stick to the right, I should hear my left motor go up, and it does. And now when I move it to the left, my right motor should go up. And it does. <laughs> At this point, we are ready to fly, but if you wanna make this your own, you wanna get creative, now would be the perfect time to slap some googly eyes on, get your markers out, maybe some spray cans or some vinyl, decorate this, make it your own, and I'll see you out in the flight field. All right, friends, we are ready to fly our FT Easy Squirrel here. This is one of my favorite models because it looks so incredibly silly in the air. Uh, first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna put our batteries in and make sure we establish proper center of gravity by using those two holes on the bottom here. Next thing, our battery is plugged in. We're gonna turn on our flight controller first and then with throttle shut, turn on our radio, increase it to full, decrease it, and at that point, we're now bound. One last step we wanna do is we wanna touch the upper right-hand button and turn it into high rates. You'll know that you're in high rates by the red LED flashing on your transmitter. The other button on the left is actually for optional lights so you can turn them on and off in the air and whenever you want. The optional lights are absolutely incredible. I definitely recommend putting those on at your convenience. For taking this off, we don't need a lot of power, just a little bit over half and we're gonna adjust our throttle accordingly. Now we're blessed with beautiful weather today so we don't really need to worry about tossing this into the wind, but if you do have a gentle breeze, make sure you turn so you can land it and take it off into the wind. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give it over half throttle, and then we'll launch it in the air. <laughs> and just like the other nature packs, you can see that it just climbs beautiful and nice and stable. 
Let's go ahead and turn this around and have some fun. So one thing about flying squirrels is they use their tail to be able to you know, navigate and stabilize themselves. That means when you chop the throttle on this one, you're gonna see that it doesn't really like to uh, stabilize. But the really cool thing about it is you can do some really cool maneuvers. So always maintain at least 10% throttle until you're ready to touch down on the ground. Right now I'm flying just around one third to one quarter throttle. So when you build these light, you don't need nearly as much throttle as the early version one easy pack. And just like the butterfly, you can fly this in a gymnasium very easy. So we're having our fun here. Let's go ahead and bring it in for a landing. Anytime you want to bring it in for a landing, just decrease your throttle, let it descend, point it into the wind. In this case, I'm going to point it towards me and we're going to catch it. Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Light Test family. Thank you so much for taking the time to build and to fly with us. One really beautiful thing about these nature packs is it just shows how amazing aviation is, science is, and God's creation and how they all work together. Can't wait to build the next project with you, and we'll see you next time.